important than truth. We must say what Shaul said to his contemporaries, that having done all, they are simply establishing their own righteousness. It's not God's way. It's not God's idea. It's their own. It's their own idea. And surely the essence of wisdom is that before we begin to act or attempt to please God, maybe we should discover what God says about the matter first. What is God's idea? What is His desire? Again, we always come back to that. People today, however, like those that show those days, they take their orders from everywhere except God's Word. You take it from tradition. You take it from the church. You take it from Judaism. You take it from the synagogue. You take it from the rabbis. You take it from the church elders. You take it from your neighbors, your family. You take it from everywhere. But God's Word. Everywhere. They rely on philosophy and statements of certain popular social engineers who live according to their own ideas rather than according to the teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach. Some God. Notice what Yeshua says about people who want to worship Him without obedience to God's commands. Do you hear me? People who want to worship Yeshua without obedience to the Torah. And I read that from the Gospel of Mark. Their worship of me is <laughs> useless. That's an abrupt statement. Their worship of me is useless because they teach man made rules as if they were doctrines. You depart from God's command and you hold on to human tradition. Indeed, he said to them, you have made a fine art of departing from God's command in order to keep your tradition. The reality it is, I think people would want to do anything possible than to do what God desires. Anything. They would rather anything than surrender themselves to God's will. Man's natural mind rebels at the thought of submitting to God's way. And I read that, again, Shul's letter to Rome, chapter 8. For the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God. Because it does not submit itself to God's Torah. Indeed, it cannot. But thus, those who identify with their old nature cannot please God. And this brings us to the absolute necessity that God calls a person out of the world. And then receives the Ruach HaKodesh, the mind of God. And then he's able to understand the instructions of God. We take one look at this world, one look at this world, and mainstream Christianity for that matter, and Judaism, and we see the lack of understanding anywhere there. And it saddens us deeply because we know what is coming and what those people will have to go through. We're all going to have to go through it because we're not getting caught up away from it. We're going through it. God's got our back. He's going to cover and protect us, but we're going through it. So you can rethink that delusion. It's going to get pretty, pretty bumpy. But I want you to hear me when I tell you this. The people have substituted, hear me, people have substituted their own laws and their own customs for God's commandments. Thinking that if they are sincere, if they are sincere, they can still receive salvation by doing nothing more and just believing the sign exists. And that's the first part of it. Mm -hmm. But there must be fruit. Yeah. And if you confess and believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, but your life is, is at odds with his will and way, then there is no salvation. And Yaakov tells us that even the demons believe that God exists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Human nature wants to, we want to be right. Right? You see that in a, in a marriage? Isn't that really always the dynamic in marriage? The tension? When you have an argument, couples at it. What's really at work there? One of you has to be right. Right? See, I was right. <laughs> Somebody wants to be right, but it does not necessarily want to do right. Our nature doesn't want to do right. We want to be right. We want the place of righteousness. But we don't want to do what's right. If it looks right or feels right, ah, that's good enough. That's my new law. That's my new way. This is nothing short of self-righteousness. We already know we're doing what seems right needs us unless we repent of that kind of thinking. Remember the scripture, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in what? Death, destruction. The thing that made the Tommy and Shalom feel 
this so strongly was the fact that he had experienced it himself. He lived it. And he tells us in so many places in his writings and sermons, there's a certain thread that goes throughout all of his, the epistles, all of his, his letters. He knew all about striving and sweating and fasting <laughs> and all the great efforts that he put in being faithful to Torah. And he also knew the feelings of hopelessness. And he knew the failure to find satisfaction. But then he experienced the miraculous release that came to him with the knowledge and understanding of the truth. So when I say the truth, I'm saying Yeshua. I'm saying Yeshua. When he had Yeshua, when he had God's truth, and he applied that sincerity and zeal to it, who could stop this man? A third of our Messianic writings, are Rabbi Shaul, for a man in one moment was sincerely killing and murdering God's people. Don't think God can't use you. He saw his friends and family and those around him still going on their old way, still guilty of the old fallacy of tradition, still tr striving to do the impossible. And when he looked at them and he saw their zeal and their great effort, it, it saddened him. It saddened him. <laughs> what a tragedy. All this zeal and sincerity. And there's no value that's going to come from it. None whatsoever. They tried to justify themselves, but they never could. And while they were trying and failing, they're deliberately refusing the knowledge. The knowledge that could give them, in reality, everything that they desire and more. And it was bad enough that all that energy and effort was sheer waste, but the tragedy was heightened and made significantly and infinitely greater by the contemplation of what they might have been if they had accepted the truth from the Word of God. They not only failed, but they refuse to be successful. That's a tragedy. Failing is one thing, but refusing to be successful, that's something even deeper. They preferred to trust themselves. They preferred to trust their own zeal. And we're all, some of us are all guilty of that. I'm going to trust my own zeal, my own sincerity, my own efforts. You're going to fail. You're going to fail if you do that. Not unless you trust yourself to Yeshua. They were so eager to do things themselves that they refused God's offer of eternity as a free gift. And they would turn from their ways. And all they had to do was believe that Yeshua was the Son of God. And that He died to atone for their sins. And had risen from the tomb. And lives again. Right now. They had to change from their own way of life and accept God's way for their life. And that's the work we're all in the middle of right now. And if they did this, they would receive what they were humanly trying to accomplish through their own misguided sincerity. Brothers and sisters, they had been sincere, but they had been sincerely wrong. And that's a tough one to accept. To be so passionately and zealously sincere with the right motive and heart, as Rabbi Shul was, but to come to that reality that, that what you were sincere about, you were sincerely wrong about it. And I raise my hand higher than anybody else. And that's why I'm preaching a different message these days, brothers and sisters. And some of you are going to like it, and some of you are not. But I was sincerely wrong about a lot of things. And I sincerely believed it. But I didn't have all the truth. And I have been set free. Because I want to be like they were. I want to be right with God. I don't want to be guilty of refusing his way. So what about people today? I'm wrapping this up right now. I know you're hungry. I mean, honestly, aren't we in the same frame of mind, in the same position as, as a culture, as a people? We're trusting in ourselves, sincerely trusting in ourselves for salvation from this world by our own efforts. Consider the task that faces us and was demanded of us. It is all entirely impossible, impossible for us by our own efforts, no matter how sincere we may be. Back to Romans 10, for I can testify to their zeal for God. I can testify to everybody here's zeal for God. There is no doubt in my mind. I am honored and blessed to come here every Shabbat and know that I'm in a room full of people that honestly and sincerely are passionately zealous for God. I know that. There's no second thought in my mind about that. 
But sometimes, sometimes some of our zeal is based on incorrect understanding. For since they were, are unaware of God's way of making people righteous and instead seek to set up their own, they have not submitted themselves to God's way, God's way, God's way of making people righteous. Zeal for God. Zeal for God means passionate devotion in the things pertaining to God or in a very general sense in the things of religion. No doubt many are sincere, but sincerity in of itself does not constitute godliness. It does not. And that's what I'm preaching from this Bema, what godliness looks like. The zeal that is acceptable, the zeal and passion and sincerity that is acceptable to God is that which does all to the glory of God, nothing less. Its primary aim is not to promote oneself, or to build up one's congregation, as so many are busy doing in our community. Yeshua and his Talmudim foretold of a falling away from the truth on the part of the great majority. It's happening. It's happening in the world. It's happening in the body of Messiah. Messianic Judaism did not arrive finally at the truth. They did not. As much as many of you ventured from the traditional church or from traditional Judaism into this realm, you thought you had arrived? No. No. We're still pushing the gas. Still moving towards the truth. The truth is Messiah. And our goal is to get there. And maybe this is the path that you chose. Praise the Lord. We're not, we're not done. We're not done. From our Messianic writings portion, Rabbi Shaul, I'll read through, states this happens because they did not receive the love of the truth and they did not believe the truth. Many of these people are sincere, but they're sincerely wrong because they're enmity against God's wishes. And Shaul wrote this a mere 30 years after the resurrection of Yeshua. Look how quickly this was an issue. Look how quickly they had to deal with people straying from the truth that walked in their presence. One of Paul's themes in his letter to Philippi is that a proper spiritual outlook is critical for progress in the faith. And I read again, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, and this is my prayer, that your love may more and more overflow in fullness of knowledge, some translations say truth, and depth of discernment. And so, so that you will be able to determine what is best, and thus be pure without blame for the day of the Messiah, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through the Yeshua, the Messiah, to the glory and praise of God. Notice how Rabbi Shaul expresses the concept that fullness of knowledge of truth is necessary in order to be truly sincere. That's it in a nutshell. Everything I just talked about, it's right there, brothers and sisters. In order to be truly sincere, it has to be in tandem with the fullness of the knowledge or truth. Zeal and sincerity without true knowledge which comes alone through Shul HaMashiach is vanity. It's futile. It's futile. Sincerity with truth helps us to do what? To seek the kingdom of God, the kingdom of truth. Let us have a zeal for God according to knowledge and according to truth. Remember, a final word, remember, godly sincerity must be paired with truth. Sincerity without truth is worthless. But sincerity with God's truth is invaluable. It's the greatest treasure you'll ever hold. Please rise. <clears throat> Fathers, we bow our heads. We do so trying to bring light to the condition of our hearts and to the condition of this world today. The condition of the body of Messiah. 
to bring light to the reality of sincerity and zeal in them themselves. But apart from truth is an abomination. It will get us nowhere but lost. And Father, I'm afraid how many are passionately and zealously moving in a direction and not knowing where they're going. Father, we talked about missing the mark. The mark is clear. It's Yeshua. The resurrected Messiah. The empty tomb. That's the goal. That's the truth. And we need to move according to your way and desire towards that truth. It's just that simple. And we need your help to do it. We need he was the light of the world to light the way for us. To show us that way. Father, any path that takes us off from that mark, Father, bring us back from it. As the crow flies, Father, take us to the truth. And then, Father, may we approach it with great passion, with great earnestness, with great sincerity. To do anything different would be insincere. But Shem Yeshu Adonai, the congregation said, Give Rick Yahweh, Vaish Marecha, Sadonai, Panavaleka, Vikanecha, Sadonai, Panavaleka, Vesim Licha, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And I pray the Lord will lift his countenance upon you, that he will bless you and show you his peace. B'Shem Yeshua Adonai. And the congregation agrees? Amen. Amen.